In the 24 years since Ocarina of Time was originally released on the Nintendo 64, this game has become a bigger legend than, well, Zelda herself. This game that captured the imaginations of millions in 1998 was only slightly more technologically advanced than an abacus, running natively at 240p at 20fps. And I don't need to tell you that in 2022, well that is totally unacceptable. But it isn't just me that thinks that. Fans far smarter and more dedicated than myself have once again decided to do something about it, and have created a version of Ocarina of Time that not only lives up to the memories you have of it, but will probably far exceed anything you could have imagined. Hey friends, what's good? Continuing down the rabbit hole of fan-made PC ports, today we are of course talking Ocarina of Time, and let me start by saying, holy shit, this is one hell of a port. We're going to be covering a lot in this video, differences between versions, improvements and updates, the legality of it all, and most importantly, how you can go about playing this yourself. But let's start with how we even got here. Ocarina of Time is no stranger to ports. What was birthed at 2 40p on the N64 was later ported to the GameCube where it quadrupled its resolution to 480p. Sure, you can also throw in the usual suspects like the virtual consoles, NSO, and PC emulation, but the only other real port was Ocarina of Time 3D on the, you guessed it, 3DS. Amongst a host of graphical improvements and the bump from 20 to 30 FPS, this became considered the definitive version of Ocarina of Time until now. Now, there is a new port available to you, and it even goes by a different name, Ship of Harkinian. Now, the amazing fans that make up the developer known as Harbour Masters may have changed the name for their port, but what you're getting is the most fully realized version of Ocarina of Time that has ever existed. First things first, Ship of Harkinian is a port of the GameCube version, not the original and not the 3DS. And that means the other graphical enhancements made to the 3DS version, like some of the new and redesigned assets and textures, won't be found in this PC port natively. At the time of recording this, there are HD texture packs out there in the wild, but most most are still under development, but I would recommend watching that space because like with a lot of fan-made projects, this could change quickly and suddenly. Without those texture packs though, that means this game will look incredibly sharp and sometimes even a little jarring. While I'm sure purists will not care at all, as someone that doesn't share in those same nostalgia goggles, there are definitely going to be some things that look a little jarring, particularly when it comes to the pre-rendered backgrounds. Now don't get me wrong, this is not a complaint or a fault of the game or even the port, this is just what happens happens because of how those pre-rendered environments were originally designed. To change them would require a lot more work, and probably redrawing and recreating these settings which could only be done with something like the aforementioned fan-made texture pack. This aside, it means that what it says on the box is exactly what you get, a modern day native PC port of Ocarina of Time, with all the highs and lows that were included in the original game. Harbour Masters have made sure to do one thing above anything else in this port though, and that is to give you choice. And Frankly, I don't know why more developers aren't doing this. This is the most user-friendly experience I've ever seen, be it through a mod, a fan-made port, and even AAA ports from your big studios, though no real surprises on that last one. If you were to ask Harbour Masters exactly what they've done with the ship of Harkinian, they would probably tell you this, because this is exactly what they do tell you in the readme. Ship of Harkinian is, quote, a PC port of OOT, allowing you to enjoy the game with modern controls, widescreen, high resolution, gyroscopy, and other great features. Sounds like pretty standard fare when it comes to remasters and ports, right? Well, wrong, because they've undersold themselves massively here. Let's talk through the different settings you'll have available to you, and I'll try and go quick, so don't be afraid to use that rewind button. If you hit F1, you're going to get a toolbar up the top here that gives you access to all sorts of different things that you can change with the game. From simple things that you would expect to find, like tweaking audio, or even tweaking your controller and changing how you have the buttons all mapped out, to different quality quality of life improvements like using the D-pad to be able to navigate menus, different languages that you can use, even different graphic settings to be able to change things like the internal resolution or the anti-aliasing level depending on how powerful your PC is. Where it really shines though is when it comes to the enhancements and the cheats. If this is your first time playing a Zelda game and you want the experience to be as close to or as authentic as it possibly can be, then you can go in here and maybe tweak a couple things like turning on the fixes for different parts of the GameCube version that were broken. Maybe changing your 2D objects into 3D objects in the overworld or animating Link in the pause menus, those sorts of things. But say this is your 10th time playing through this game, you can find a lot of quality of life improvements here for you as well, like the option to speed up the text as it's displayed on the screen, or even just skip the text entirely. You can also go through and do things like have a 
it be so that Link can climb faster up ladders or push blocks around faster. You can even have it so that when it comes to opening chests, it's always a kick every time you go to do that and just makes that animation a little bit quicker. There are a ton of different ways that you can tweak this experience from changing the difficulty option down to your success rate when it comes to fishing to reduce clutter and that means things like being able to mute that low HP alarm or even have an option to be able to use a more minimal UI. You could have this game running at 60, running at 120, you could have it running all the way up to 250 FPS. A lot of it is just going to be dictated by your computer and by your monitor. The other big one that you can do is the free camera option. So both the unlocked frame rate mode and the free camera are things that were introduced recently in the game. So free camera is exactly like how it sounds. The traditional camera is going to follow Link, turn when he turns, that sort of thing. However, it only really works on the one axis. It moves left, it moves right. What the free camera does is it allows you to map that to your controller's analog stick to be able to use it like you would if you were playing something like Breath of the Wild and give you complete control over the camera regardless of if Link's moving and across multiple axes. So you can move it up and down as well as just left and right. This is something that obviously does have its own imperfection sometimes because the camera is not supposed to move through certain areas. If you move it too far down, you'll be able to see under the world. You'll be able to clip through items a little bit more, but for the most part, it works kind of exactly as you would expect it to work. You can see the things that you're supposed to see. Objects don't get in the way of the camera. And for me, who's never really had much experience with this game outside of the 3DS version, then this is something that is a game changer in terms of how accessible it is to play now. Those two big features aside, the next option that you're going to be looking into and having quite a bit of fun with are the cheats. Now you have everything in here ranging from your classic infinite money, health, ammo, etc. But it gets really interesting when you start looking at some of the things in this list here. You have the option to be able to turn on climb everything and make this a sort of faux breath of the wild game where you're not limited just to vines and just to ladders. If you want to take that a step further, you can map a moon jump onto your L button, meaning that all you do is hold that down and you can send Link up, up and away. You also have the option to be able to turn on no clip and be able to make it into areas that you are absolutely not supposed to be going into. But for fans of the game and even just fans of game design, this will let you break the game in new and interesting ways. That means even if you're not a speedrunner, then you still have the option now to be able to just jump into a game and play around with it and really figure out how it works. All these options are really just scratching the surface. There is so much that you can dig into here from developers tools with save editors and debug modes to cosmetic to be able to change how Link looks, how NPCs look, essentially a lot of the world around him and randomizers as well. So if you want to go through and have a randomized run where you're replacing all the items in different chests, where you're not sure where anything is anymore, you can do that. Or say you want to just go through and be able to track everything that you're picking up as you're playing through the game, then you have this item tracker option. So you can pull this up and see exactly what you have and how many of those items you have as well. There are so many things in this game that are those quality of life improvements that will change your experience depending on how you want it to change. The biggest thing to remember is that if you want it one way, then you can have it that way. If you want that classic Nintendo 64 experience, then you can get that at the press of a button. If you don't want that, but you want something that's kind of in between, that looks more modern, that controls a little bit more like modern games, then you can get that as well just by changing some of those settings. If you are a pro and you want to break the game apart, you can do that. If you want want to go through and do a randomized run, you can do that. If you want to change the difficulty so that enemies are doing 256 times the damage that they would normally do, you can do that. And that isn't going to impact anyone else's experience, but it is going to give you the best experience that you could ask for playing a game that hopefully you love. Now, all of this might seem too good to be true, so I'm sure a lot of you are thinking the same thing. Surely Nintendo aren't having a bar of this, right? Well, I'm guessing they're not happy about it, but there's also not much they can do about it. At least, not easily. Let me preface this with the fact that just the other day, I thought this was a picture of three cats and a duck, so I wouldn't be trusting me with any legal advice, but this seems to be the rub of the green. Nintendo are no strangers to the old DMCA, a takedown notice they'll send to anyone who uses the internet to share unlicensed copies of their work. This paired with the fact that Nintendo has access to about a thousand lawyers and about a hundred billion dollars, and there aren't many creators brave enough to go up against them. 
But here's the thing Nintendo's lawyers don't want you to know. There's a law regarding fair use, which permits the unlicensed use of copyright protected works in certain circumstances. And what's particularly relevant here is transformative content. According to the US Copyright Office, transformative uses are quote, those that add something new with a further purpose or different character and do not substitute for the original use of work. Now, this is something that's pretty subjective and could be argued from both sides, but there are two key pieces to the puzzle that keep this quite legal. The first is that unlike the other traditional ports and fan-made remakes that Nintendo loves to shit all over, this version of Ocarina doesn't use any of the game's actual code. Yeah, that's right, not a lick of it. In what is slowly becoming more common, Harbour Masters have painstakingly decompiled all the code from the original game and recompiled it, essentially creating something that is brand new and none of it is owned by Nintendo. Instead of just rewriting the game, they've instead created software designed to read code from a separate ROM file, which is what is extracted to run the PC port. So where do you get this ROM? Well, I can't tell you that information myself, but there are a lot of places on Google that will. So consider that as a good place to start. The second piece of the puzzle, and maybe the most important one of all, is that this is completely free. This entire effort is a passion project that's been in the works for well over two years, and they are not accepting any monetary donations or contributions. So since you can't give them your money, think about giving them your kindness, and it never hurts to throw a thank you into the Discord. Now, with all this said and done, does that mean Nintendo can't issue a cease and desist or take this project to court. Absolutely not. They are well within their rights to do so. However, whether they would be successful or not, well, chances are they probably wouldn't be. Let's hope they chalk it up to too much effort and just leave this one alone. Well, now that I've schooled you on the legalities of it all, you could probably just stop watching this video and go check out the damn game for yourself. What was that? How? Oh, well, of course. Let me tell you how to do that first. First, join the Ship of Arcanian Discord. I've got a link to it in the description. Not only is that gonna be the best place to get the most up-to-date download for the game, but it's also gonna be the best place to ask questions if you have any issues installing it. Again, I thought a pig was a cat. I'm not gonna be able to help with troubleshooting. Follow the link for the Rachel Alpha 3.0 version for either Windows, Linux, or Mac OS, depending on what you're using, and download that. Once the file's downloaded, use something like WinRAR to be able to extract it to your desktop or wherever it is that you wanna save that file. Next, to make it work, you will need to get a copy of the ROM, which again, I can't help you with, and no one in the comments will be able to help you with either. Instead, take a look at the README file in the download, and it will tell you exactly what you're looking for and again, Google will be your best friend on this one. Once you have the ROM and you don't have to do this part, but I would move it into the same folder as all of the other extracted resources, just to make it a bit easier to track everything. Then launch the OTR GUI. All you need to do here is select the ROM you want the program to read and then sit back and let it do its thing. Once it's finished, close down that window and click the SOH EXE to run the game and Bob's your uncle, you are good to go, my friend. One last pro tip. Alt and enter is the shortcut to make it full screen. If any of that was helpful, a great way to say thanks is tapping that like button so this can hopefully be helpful to even more people. The future of Ship of Harkinian is very exciting and the fact that it has had two major updates since initially launching in March of this year says to me that this is just the beginning. It looks like this port is not slowing down when it comes to regular features and improvements and being a native PC game, I can't wait to see what the world of modding opens this up to next. If you are at all interested in the world of other high quality PC fan made ports, I'm thinking of doing a bit of a series on them because there is some seriously impressive stuff out there. If you're on the fence on if that sounds like something you'd be into, then give me one more chance to win you over and check out this video about an incredible PC port of a PlayStation platforming classic. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Let's go. I'm not gonna lie, daughter has gonna yagi her brain fried. My lady papa's any I 